Today we are going to do a poiki, a real traditional South African poiki. And you're probably thinking to yourself, a poi what? Yes, a poiki. Poiki as in boy and car key. So instead of the B, you put a P and you get to poi key. Simple pronunciation. We are going to use one of these good old fashioned a witch's cauldron. No, it's not a witch's cauldron, it's just a normal cauldron. This came from the Dutch and we are going to go through how this is done. Let's get into it. The poiki descended from the Dutch which was brought from the Netherlands to South Africa in the 17th century and found in the homes and villages of people throughout Southern Africa. The pot is heated using small amounts of wood or charcoal as a fuel source. Twisted grass, if you don't have those fuel sources, and even animal dung. That is just disgusting. But I suppose in the 17th century, that's as good as what they had. In South Africa, poikikos literally translated into English, which is small pot food. It is a dish prepared outdoors. It is traditionally cooked in a round cast iron three-legged cauldron, just like a witch's cauldron, just smaller. Okay, so let's just talk about the meat for a second. What we have got is we've got a couple of pieces of meat that is on the bone. What is important to know why we have meat on the bone, the bone will add flavor because of the marrow and the meat will fall off the bone because of the length of the slowness of the cooking and the pieces of meat that we use are just standard meat chunks. So there's really nothing fancy about this. Um, if you want to cut up your own meat, you can. I'm just super lazy in just finding the easiest way to get this done. And the store has already pre-cut, not P, pre-cut meat. So why waste your time if someone else can waste their time? And these are literally just ribs that have been cut. Then we add in, we're gonna be having onion and um, they are roughly cut. Uh, these onions will disappear, right? So uh, you don't need to worry about, oh my God, it's gotta be super fine. No, just rough size onion because they will be cooked down in the cooking process. We then have spice uh, in the description um, of the video. You will have the full detail of the spice but we have our spices. We're then going to have carrots. Um, again, just buy the small, petite carrots um, and it just becomes a whole bit easier. And good old garlic. We have a chunk of garlic. We have um, tinned tomatoes. Uh, it's just easier to just have tomatoes. Again, someone else has chopped it up for you instead of you chopping it up. Um, and we then finally have mushrooms. Uh, when we get outside, I'll then go through the order and what happens and how it happens. A very important thing is this little contraption. This contraption actually sits within the uh, poiki pot and the liquid gets sucked into here and it'll pop out and it actually just creates a flow from a water or liquid perspective. What we'll also be doing is cutting up potatoes into chunks. Um, just wash the potato first to make sure that all the sand and dust residue is off the potato. You do not need to peel the potatoes, just cut them. So guys, now that we're starting the fire, use small pieces of wood with some charcoal and get your fire to commence. This is not a conventional a barbecue where you need piles of fire and whatever else you want to have the fire contained under the pot um, so it's very important that you start with a small piece of uh, chunks of wood and work around that during this phase it is very important to have a drink cheers this warms insides of your body up to make sure that you can wear a short sleeve shirt outside in the cold 
because you can. What is very important, once you've got the pot to be warm, you add in some oil. The oil does a few things. One, it is to coat the pot to make it non-stick. And two, it's going to be used for the onions and all the other flavor. It's probably about a quarter cup of oil that is needed. Once your oil is hot, get your onions into the oil and you are going to just get them to caramelize and once they start to caramelize add in your spices it does sound quite weird that you're adding in your spice before your meat and whatever else but when you add in the spice into the onion you are cooking the spice and remember the onion is going to uh, dissipate with the cooking um, so it's really important to have it and you mix it up, it'll be picture perfect in the end. Just trust me on this. Now we get into the phase of adding in the meat. It doesn't make a difference if you add in the bones first or the meat first, whichever. Just get your meat into the pot and then we follow it with the potatoes uh, then with the tomatoes the reason why we go through all of these different stages is the meat takes the longest to cook then the potatoes then the veg and the uh, tomato paste and then we add in the carrots uh, mushrooms and every 30 minutes every 45 minutes you can check on it no stirring is needed we are now all done We have been doing this uh, poiki pot for the last couple of hours. It has been incredible. The alcohol has even been better than the food and the smell has topped everything. It is now time for the reveal of what this poiki looks like. Now remember, we have not touched a single thing. The only thing that we have done is literally just lifted the uh, lid to uh, check how things are going, um, but nothing else has been touched. Wow, this is looking amazing. And my amazing assistant is trying to get the camera lens to stay completely clean and steam free with piles of temperature just hammering the lens wow 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 and excuse the steam and the blobs and the lobs and everything else that goes with it it smells amazing i have to tell you it seriously smells amazing And there we go, it is 100% empty. You can absolutely add rice to this, you can add pasta, you can add any other uh, item that you want to add to this, or you can keep it as it is. But that does not mean that you should not or cannot make rice. Wow, this is looking just amazing. Look how beautiful this meat is looking. How amazing is that meat? That liquid, the sauce, it is just amazing. Wow. That is delicious. Truly delicious. Let's try some of the potato. And here we go, here's the potato, lots of sauce, the gravy. Wow, how delicious does that look? 
and it is literally just falling apart while the potato is on the fork literally just falling apart wow that is amazing my son Seth is just laughing in the background cannot believe that whatever we touch just literally falls apart but with that it is just remarkable the sauce is a beautiful rich thick tomato base it is just amazing the um, all the spices you don't have this volume of beyond crazy extreme heat in spice you have the flavor you have the richness you have the the flavor of the gravy with the meat with the with the fat that's been dissolved over time you've got the potato that has been um, literally just over the last few hours has been cooked away in the in the liquid it is just truly remarkable right so when you see the tomato that's the actual tomato that's been cooking away that you have the amazing flavor and the aroma and everything else that goes with this dish Mm. Wow. As cold as what it is outside, it makes your insides incredibly warm. If you had false teeth and half of the teeth were frigging missing, this would be soft enough, soft enough for you to chew on. It is that soft and that delicious. Like literally. Like no teeth needed for this meat no teeth needed special offer but wait there's more so guys with that give it a go my family is going berserk in the background, can, cannot stop laughing. They're trying to just grab as it, as it is, trying to understand what it is that I'm going berserk about and trying to understand why I am wowed by this specific dish. And with that, catch you guys on the next one.